Hello everyone and welcome to day 9 of Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot and today we are sharing the top 5 decks on our wish list. Ooh -wee. I have a top 3 that are strong and stable and won't be going anywhere and that is the Tabula Mundi colour version. The Tarot of Transformation, which I cannot believe I still haven't pressed that button. I've had that deck in my cart so many times. Whatever. Um, and Tarot of the Holy Light. Now, I do have the app, which is a help. I mean, it's better than nothing. But having held that beautiful deck in my hand, that just ruined it all. <laughs> I thought I really want to own this deck please, and study that book. So if I combine those three decks, I would be the happiest girl in the whole USA, as the song used to go. But when you add them up in Australian dollars and add the freight, it is quite an expensive exercise. So uh, it's kind of a bit heart-wrenching for me. But, you know, that's what a wish list is for. Now for four and five... I feel like there's a few kind of golden oldies coming through for me because things like um, Vision Quest I love, The Fifth Tarot I love, Mary L I love, and yes, believe it or not, I don't have it, but I know I can get it. The Guyan Tarot I'm sort of torn because it's beautiful, but the borders I would definitely have to cut off. But... The Hermetic Tarot has been on my wish list for so long, it's embarrassing. So I think, yeah, I'm starting to ramble, I'm sorry. I, I do believe that Hermetic Tarot will be my next purchase because, even though it's number four on my list, if I have to give it a number, it's easy to obtain and it's inexpensive. The fifth one, uh, very torn, but I'm going to award it to the Bonefire Tarot. I loved that deck when it first came out, but I missed out on the original, um, the first edition. And I was so devastated at the time. I really was miffed. My heart was a little broken that I missed out and no one wanted to sell it, of course. But now, um, now that it's out in the mass-produced, I'm very happy to buy the mass-produced. Hey, it's better than nothing. It still looks beautifully done. And just to throw it out there, for some strange reason, I feel this reconnect with two decks that have been around for a while, and that is the Spiral and the Celestial, and I'm torn over both. So I might even propose a question to people out there in YouTube land, um, if you have it, why and how do you like it? They both have a similar kind of energy to me, but... I don't know, as I say, I'm, I'm admiring them from afar. Two decks that I thought I wouldn't buy, all of a sudden, there they are. They've moved up on my wish list, which I find really interesting. And I think it's all a part of last year's profound cycle of change. And I'm starting to see things differently yet again, as we all do when we go through changes. So, yeah, they may step up. And again, I'm just grateful that they are very affordable. As for the Oracle, don't get me started. There are a few Oracle cards that I'd like, but I've already broken the first, the top five. Um, there is an Egyptian deck that I'm interested in and a Chakra deck, and I wouldn't mind buying another maybe nature-based slash animal Oracle, but I'll just leave it at that because there's nothing kind of super, super urgent. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to leave it at that and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.